Play that guitar. Jam harder like a magic kiss. Rock and roll is the music. Jam the rock guitar. Rock and roll, school children. Rock and roll, school. Rock and roll, school. Rock and roll, school. Rock it to the break of dawn. All right, let's let's. Okay. I think it looks good. I'm Robert Kelly. And I'm Wesley Harris. When we first got the idea to document the current status of the American school system, we knew the only way to get an unbiased opinion would be to infiltrate the classroom from the inside. We knew that we could see what the current status truly is, is by finding someone from the inside, namely a student, who we will secretly videotape his ordeal. Surveys and interviews, these never give you the true picture. The student's name Lance Delbert Johnson, or LDJ, had to be one we can trust. Actually, wow. This the average student, not too many friends, meant he was available and unlikely to corrupt. We equipped him with video cameras so we can get a view into his everyday life. What we discovered was, was what every student was complaining about, but no one was taking seriously. Um. Guys, I didn't have a chance to check your... I'm going to try to do them tonight, but um, I was gone over the After weekend. After doing the film on classroom homework, we saw that the biggest complaint of students was really how boring and mundane the work was. Typically, students will enter a classroom, sit down, take notes, and then take a test on it later. This is a naive way of learning. Students don't learn when they're being crammed into small, uncomfortable rooms and then take mindless notes. Then they are punished if they misbehave or if they're unable to sit down without fidgeting. This is a factory style of learning. It takes its roots in that the government has assigned a concrete amount of information that they must be learned in a given amount of time. This is then used to determine the school's funding. The only problem is, is that you can't treat education as a business. Okay class, do number one to seven hundred in the workbook. Do what? Wow. 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 Okay, now make it 1 to 2,000! What? You oh. Now the problem we notice is how hard it is to work in a classroom environment. A hot, sweaty room crammed with 30 kids isn't exactly the best place to work in. We were having trouble just focusing on a single thing as well. Here at this school, we like to encourage our pupils to move forward with grace. We encourage them to perform with the utmost dignity, that which, which in the end provides sanguine pupils. We, in, we encourage them to move forward with grace so that they can move on past the audacious activities of their more odorous brethren that pollute this school with grief. So what do you guys do in class? Not much. We really don't do anything. It's pretty boring, actually. Who's your favorite teacher? James. Two. James. Why is he your favorite teacher? Because we really do anything. Well, much of the talk nowadays is how to punish students who don't want to do the work and how to make them do the work even if they don't want to. However, if we were to say that the work isn't boring and the teachers are doing their best to make sure that every single student succeeds. The environment isn't just one of learning. It seems as if the motivation to learn is being pushed out of the students through a sort of industrial learning arena. The work is designed to help them do well on the test. If they do well on the test, the school gets funding. If they don't, the school won't. So even if the school is trying to instill creativity and high order thinking, the pressure for funding is leading to an industrial learning arena. And that's not how students learn, and it's not how we'll advance as a society. Okay, on the 16th, you will complete the chart list. We were a bit timid about doing a section about students because types of students and their personalities vary from school to school. 
We resolve to ask the students themselves what kind of groups and personalities they find in the school. There's always that one kid, you know, the kid that's not all, always all there, but we don't harass them or anything. They just kind of get us confused. Okay. Can anyone tell me how Walt Whitman managed a sense of hope in this work? Oh, I know this one. I know this one. It's, it's seven. It's seven. seven guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Okay. Who knows the sum of this budget and how much theater will have left after two weeks? Oh, I know this one for sure. It's swag. Swag? What do you mean, swag? There are also these jocks who are totally insane and intimidate everybody. Hey, get that camera out of my face. I take AP weightlifting all day, every day. <laughs> Football! We've, we've also got a few tryhards. You know, some of the overachievers. Hey, LDJ. Have you finished number 23 yet? Nope. Hmm. Penis. Hey, LDJ. Have you finished tomorrow's homework yet? Nah. Dude, you want to go get pizza sometime? Yeah. That works. Yeah, I like pizza. I like Papa John, but it gets Hey, LDJ. Have you finished next semester's project yet? Nope. I was glad to see the many different types of students at the school, but I was also disappointed seeing that they weren't really contempt with their education because their needs were not met. Unfortunately, the school caters to the student that does not exist. The one who likes to sit in a desk for hours on end in a cramped and competitive environment. Those who manage are praised. Those who do not, which is the majority because everyone learns differently, are ostracized and told to deal with it because they're told the school, city, county, or state told to do it this way. This, the society is treating school like a business. And how many people like to go to work every day? Yeah, the, um. the staff at the school for us included principals, teachers, security guards, and well, anyone who worked at the school. We decided to go all right and interview the staff members like we did the students. And we also put LDJ in situations where he would interact with each kind of staff member. Now, Delbert. Please tell me why you punched your class's pet? I told you, two directors told me to. <sighs> no, okay, Delbert, we can go about this all day. I just got a call from the office. They said that Mr. Fappers is in critical condition. What do you have to say for yourself? My inchoate journey through this school is to be a provider, a counselor, and a teacher to these young pupils. Does this bring you pleasure? Yeah, yeah, does it? Pleasure in hurting innocent creatures. I really do hope to become an emollient to these children's stubborn minds. Okay, Delbert. I'm being very patient with you now. I don't want any of this to disrupt you. I want us all to be friends here. Just please, tell us what you did. <laughs> At one point, I was a Bon Vivient. Excuse my French. But um, I would like to help these kids get past that as I once was helped get get past that part of my life which was very difficult. <sighs> you know Delbert, when I was your age we didn't have all of these luxuries. But then I discovered lifting. But I do like to be nice to these children. I'm their friend first and then their principal second. <laughs> okay Delbert, we've been at this for two hours. I missed two full episodes of Breaking Bad, the end of the season. I needed to see that end of that series. I guess I have no choice now but to expel your at. Okay, I see. Looks like you're free to go. Have a nice afternoon. Get the hell out of here. Mr. Principal, we are wondering if we could get another word with <laughs> Got my jobs here at this school. Let's keep this pace. I mean, to me, I do a very good job. Kids staying here, all these kids up in this school. Sometimes they need to let off a little steam. My job here at this school is to basically keep them in line, behaving, and very strictly behave very well. <laughs> my job. Well, I've been teaching for about a year now, and I feel like I've really connected with my students. Um, I feel like I can help them reach their full potential, and 
a lot of them were failing when I got here, and I, I really helped them raise their Ds. Can you please direct your attention to the board? The staff was interesting. We sensed just as much discontent from them as students, but something was different. Though the act of helping and showing young students how to become valuable members of society is by no means bad or unsatisfying, the act of keeping them in line by arbitrary rules they've created out of petty fears does take its toll. And what with all the criticism the American school system is taking nowadays, it must be pretty easy for staff members to feel pretty unfulfilled. As we came to the end of our project, we were unsure if we revealed enough of the system to bring about the change that was so apparently needed. But we grew to the young, we grew close to the annoying members of our film, and we realized that instead of antagonizing them and pointing out their flaws, that would be getting away from the point. They were just merely reacting to the stressful environment that the school, that the industrial school system, gave them. School isn't fun for anyone, but it's because school isn't for learning. School is for striving to succeed in an economically based environment that requires skills that are only acquired through painstaking work, tedious hours, and irritating peers. School is a job. It doesn't motivate you to learn. It motivates you to be efficient. But then we thought, maybe we were being too pessimistic. The students here were genuinely happy to be alive, to be with friends. They just had seven hours of school to tolerate. We can't hate we can't hate the industrial school system for creating a less than perfect environment. Instead, we can just work together to change that because we have the power. Until we realize that, school will just be an inconvenience. I can't even see my tongue! Because you have to chew off the same What is that for? For the lull. Jam the rock guitar.